Hello science lovers, and welcome to the channel. Today, we're going to dive deep into the weird and wonderful world of biology to reveal some facts so shocking you might just have to pick your jaw off the floor. Before we start, I want to warn you that there are some animal in this video, so if you have arachnophobia or fear, disgust any other animals, just skip ahead or use the timing below. If that's okay, then grab all your snacks and let's go. Well, the first fact will be creepy, I've warned you. Imagine an ant diligently going about its business when it suddenly becomes hijacked by a microscopic monster. This monster, a parasitic fungus called Ophiocordyceps unilateralis, takes control of the ant's brain, transforming it into a mindless puppet. Here's the nightmarish story of zombie ants. The fungus starts its evil plan by releasing sticky spores into the environment. When an unsuspecting ant comes into contact with these spores, they latch onto its body. The spores germinate, sending microscopic threads, hyphae, that penetrate the ant's exoskeleton. These hyphae then grow throughout the ant's body, slowly taking over its internal systems. As the fungus invades the ant's brain, it starts to manipulate its behavior. The ant becomes disoriented and loses its natural instincts. One of the most shocking signs of a zombie ant is its bizarre climbing behavior. The fungus compels the ant to climb high up a plant stem or tree trunk. Once at the peak of its climb, the ant will clamp its mandibles onto a leaf or twig in a death grip. This positioning is perfect for the fungus' next move. After the ant's demise, the fungus erupts from the ant's body, fruiting a stalk that releases thousands of new spores ready to infect more unsuspecting ants. The cycle of death and fungal reproduction continues. It sounds like a script for some horror movie on Onimus Planet, doesn't it? But there's science behind it. Scientists believe the fungus manipulates the ant's brain chemistry, altering its behavior to benefit the fungus's reproduction. This is a prime example of how parasites can exploit their hosts in gruesome ways. The idea of a tiny organism taking over the mind and body of another creature is truly horrifying. Zombie ants highlight the complex and sometimes brutal strategies employed by parasites in the natural world. Buckle up for the story of the seemingly immortal Turritopsis dornii, also known as the immortal jellyfish. Unlike most creatures who face inevitable aging and death, the Turritopsis dornii possesses a remarkable ability. It can potentially cheat death and revert back to a younger stage of its life cycle. Here's how this mind-blowing feat works. Most jellyfish go through a complex life cycle with two distinct stages. Medusa. This is the familiar jellyfish stage we see swimming freely in the ocean. Polyp. This is a sedentary, asexually reproducing stage that attaches itself to the seafloor. When faced with stress or injury, the Turritopsis dornii can undergo a process called transdifferentiation. This essentially allows it to rewind its development. The adult medusa stage can transform itself back into a polyp stage, essentially becoming a younger version of itself. From the polyp stage, it can then bud asexually and develop into a new generation of medusas. Theoretically, this cycle of transdifferentiation could be repeated indefinitely, allowing the Turritopsis dornii to avoid biological death due to old age. While the potential for immortality exists, there are limitations. Predation, disease, and environmental factors can still threaten the Turritopsis dornii. Scientists are still unraveling the exact mechanisms behind transdifferentiation in the Turritopsis dornii. Understanding this process could have implications for regenerative medicine research. It might seem strange, but our bodies aren't just human. We share our internal space with a vast number of microscopic organisms, mainly bacteria. In fact, these bacterial hitchhikers outnumber our human cells by a staggering margin. 
Estimates suggest that up to 56% of the cells in your body aren't actually human cells, but bacterial cells. These bacteria reside in various parts of your body, particularly your gut, where they form a complex ecosystem called the gut microbiome. These bacteria aren't just passive passengers, they play a crucial role in our health and well-being. Here are some ways our gut bacteria benefit us. Aiding digestion. Bacteria help break down complex carbohydrates and other nutrients that our bodies can't digest on their own. They also produce vitamins like vitamin K. Immune system support. The gut microbiome interacts with our immune system, helping to train it to differentiate between harmless and harmful substances. Mood and behavior. Emerging research suggests a link between gut bacteria and mental health. The gut microbiome might influence mood and even neurological function. So, while we think of ourselves as distinct organisms, we're actually a complex combination of human and bacterial cells. This highlights the interconnectedness of life and the importance of these microscopic partners in our overall health. Mother Nature throws us a curveball sometimes, and the concept of fixed genders isn't universal in the animal kingdom. Here's the surprising truth about sequential hermaphroditism, where some animals can switch genders throughout their lives. Unlike humans and many other animals with fixed sexes, some species exhibit a remarkable ability called sequential hermaphroditism. This means they can change sex, one way or the other, depending on various factors. There are several reasons why an animal might benefit from switching genders. Size matters. In some species, like clownfish, the social hierarchy dictates sex. The largest fish in the group is typically female, while the others remain male. If the female dies, one of the males can transform into a female to take her place, ensuring the group has a breeding pair. Resource efficiency. For some species, like certain types of sea bass, it might be more efficient for smaller individuals to be male and fertilize the eggs of larger females. As they grow, they can then switch to become females themselves and produce even more offspring. The specific mechanisms of sex change vary depending on the species. Here are some general processes. Gonadal transformation. The animal's reproductive organs, called gonads, can physically change from producing sperm to producing eggs or vice versa. Hormonal shifts. Changes in hormone levels can trigger the switch in sex. For example, a decrease in testosterone and an increase in estrogen might signal a male-to-female transition. The ability to completely change sex challenges our traditional understanding of gender roles in the animal kingdom. It demonstrates the remarkable adaptability of some species and the strategies they've developed to maximize reproductive success. In the world of flatworms, losing your head isn't necessarily a death sentence. Here's the lowdown on the incredible regenerative abilities of some worm species, particularly the flatworm champion, the planarian. Imagine a worm minding its own business when suddenly, whoops, it gets sliced in half. For most creatures, this would be a fatal blow. However, some flatworms, like the planarian, possess a superpower, regeneration. Planarians are champions of regeneration. If you cut a planarian in half, here's what happens. The amazing thing is, both halves can regenerate. The head end will grow a new tail and the tail end will grow a new head with all the necessary sensory organs, brain, and mouth. Essentially, you end up with two new planarians from one. Planarians can regenerate more than just heads. They can also regrow lost limbs, eyes, and even parts of their internal organs. It's a truly remarkable feat of biological resilience. Scientists are still unraveling the exact mechanisms behind planarian regeneration. However, some key factors are involved. Stem cells. Planarians have a large population of pluripotent stem cells throughout their bodies. These stem cells can differentiate into various cell types, 
allowing them to rebuild lost structures. Signaling molecules. When a planarian is injured, specific signaling molecules are released, triggering the regeneration process and guiding the stem cells to rebuild the missing parts. The ability of a worm to completely regrow a missing head, along with other body parts, is truly mind-blowing. It pushes the boundaries of what we thought possible in terms of animal regeneration and offers exciting possibilities for future research in regenerative medicine. We often hear about viruses as the bad guys, causing illnesses like the common cold or the flu. But believe it or not, some viruses can actually be beneficial. Here's the surprising truth about the good side of viruses. There are two main types of viruses that can be helpful. Bacteriophages. Phages, these are viruses that specifically target and kill bacteria. They're like the tiny ninjas of the microscopic world, taking down harmful bacteria that could otherwise cause infections. The potential applications of phages are exciting. They offer a potential alternative to antibiotics, which are becoming less effective due to the rise of antibiotic-resistant bacteria. Phage therapy involves using specific phages to target and eliminate harmful bacteria within a patient. Viral vectors in gene therapy. Viruses have a natural ability to insert their genetic material into host cells. Scientists can leverage this ability to create viral vectors, which are essentially modified viruses used for gene therapy. Scientists can remove the harmful genes from a virus and replace them with therapeutic genes. These modified viral vectors can then be introduced into patient cells, delivering the therapeutic genes to help treat genetic diseases. The potential benefits of viruses extend beyond fighting infections and treating diseases. Here are some other exciting possibilities. Cancer treatment. Some viruses are being explored for their potential to target and destroy cancer cells. Vaccines. Certain viruses can be weakened or modified to create vaccines. These vaccines can then be used to train the immune system to recognize and fight off specific diseases. The idea that viruses, often seen as harmful pathogens, can be beneficial is a surprising twist. It highlights the complex and sometimes unexpected ways that biological systems work. Exploring the potential of beneficial viruses opens doors for new approaches to treating diseases and improving human health. Unlike most electric fish that inhabit saltwater, the electric eel reigns supreme in freshwater environments like the Amazon River Basin. But don't be fooled by its slithering appearance. This eel packs a serious punch, a bioelectrical punch, that is. The electric eel has specialized organs along its sides called electric organs. These organs contain thousands of electrocytes that can generate powerful electrical discharges. The electric eel can discharge up to 800 volts of electricity. That's enough to stun a horse, knock an adult human unconscious, and even kill smaller animals. The electric eel uses its electric discharge for various purposes, including hunting. The eel stuns its prey, making them easier to catch and eat. Defense. A powerful electric shock can deter potential predators. Navigation. Some scientists believe the electric eel might use weak electric fields for electrolocation, helping them sense their surroundings in murky water. The sheer power of the electric eel's electrical discharge is truly mind-blowing. It's hard to imagine a fish generating enough electricity to stun a large animal. This unique ability highlights the incredible diversity and adaptations found in the natural world. Let's dive into the inky depths of the ocean, where the sunlight doesn't reach, and meet some truly remarkable creatures, the deep sea dwellers who glow without needing oxygen. The vast majority of bioluminescent creatures, those that produce their own light, rely on a process that involves oxygen. But in the crushing darkness of the deep sea, where oxygen levels are scarce, some creatures have developed an alternative method to illuminate their world. 
cold bioluminescence. Unlike the more common bioluminescence that uses oxygen, cold bioluminescence doesn't require it. Here's how it works. Deep sea creatures utilize a protein called acorin and a molecule called coelenterazine. When these two chemicals react, they release energy in the form of light. Cold bioluminescence is a highly efficient process, producing light with minimal energy waste. This is crucial for deep sea creatures living in an environment with limited resources. Many deep sea fish, jellies, and other organisms utilize cold bioluminescence. They use this light for various purposes, including attracting prey. Predators lure unsuspecting prey with enticing light displays. Communication. Some species use light signals to communicate with each other. Camouflage. Certain creatures emit counterillumination, a dazzling light from their underside, which can blend them in with the faint light filtering down from the surface, making them less visible to predators from below. The ability to create light without oxygen is a game changer in the deep sea. It allows creatures to thrive in an environment devoid of sunlight and oxygen, showcasing the incredible adaptations life can develop to survive in the most extreme conditions. This challenges our understanding of bioluminescence and reveals the hidden wonders of the deep ocean. We all know spiders have eight legs, but did you know they also use them for tasting? Unlike us humans with taste buds on our tongues, spiders have a different approach. Spiders actually lack taste buds on their mouth parts. Instead, they rely on tiny sensory organs scattered across their legs, particularly on the tips of their pedipalps, the two small leg-like appendages near their mouth. These sensory organs are called chemoreceptors. So, how do these chemoreceptors on their feet help spiders taste? Spiders constantly tap and explore their surroundings with their legs. When they encounter a potential food source, they use their chemoreceptors to gather information. The chemoreceptors are sensitive to various chemicals present on the surface of their prey or the environment. These chemicals can be indicators of taste, smell, and even texture. Based on the chemical information received by their chemoreceptors, spiders decide whether something is safe to eat or not. The chemoreceptors on their legs aren't just for taste. They also play a role in mating. Spiders use their chemoreceptors to identify potential mates and detect pheromones. Navigation. Some spiders might use chemoreceptors on their legs to navigate their environment and locate prey or shelter. The idea of spiders tasting with their feet might seem strange, but it's a clever adaptation that allows them to survive in their environment. Giraffes are truly magnificent creatures known for their long necks and graceful movements. But beneath their elegant exterior lies a surprising secret. They have the highest blood pressure of any land animal. A giraffe's blood pressure can reach up to 280-180 mmHg, which is roughly three times higher than a typical human blood pressure of 120-80 mmHg. This immense pressure ensures that enough blood reaches the brain, even against the strong pull of gravity. A giraffe's heart is a powerhouse. It can weigh up to 25 pounds, 11 kilograms, and is about the size of a basketball. This massive heart muscle can generate the immense force needed to pump blood all the way up their long necks. Here are some additional adaptations that help giraffes manage their high blood pressure. The walls of a giraffe's arteries are particularly thick and elastic to withstand the high pressure without bursting. Giraffes have a special mechanism that helps prevent them from fainting when they lower their heads to drink. This involves valves in their jugular veins that restrict blood flow back to the head when it's bent downwards. The sheer level of a giraffe's blood pressure is mind-blowing. It highlights the incredible adaptations animals develop to overcome physical challenges. Well, that all for today. These are just a few examples of the incredible and sometimes shocking things that living organisms can do. 
What other mind-blowing science facts would you love to explore? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more awesome science content. Until next time, keep exploring the fascinating world around you.